aside from being a very useful long table for our display in our shop, this is what you would typically call an oak refectory or farmhouse type table. It dates to round about 1900. Nice and solid, very strong, without any wobble to it. But it's a little bit more than that, as you might expect from us. And if you look down below, you can see these funny angled stretchers, which are actually bolted in place and so remove so that the table can fold. So I'm just going to move all of this stuff off the table and we'll turn it upside down and we'll have a closer look to see how it works. As you will have seen as I've dismantled the table, these thick solid legs are held in the extended position, pushed apart by these stretchers which are hinged to the middle so that they'll sit down flat. And at this end, we've got a lovely great big fat bolt which locks it. And also the stretcher, I don't know if you can see, it's just cut out on a V-shape here so that it will fit in nicely. So once a bolt goes in, the stretcher also overhangs the stretcher of the pair of legs, making it a little bit more secure. And of course, once those are removed, the legs will fold down rather neatly like that. The table can be turned back on its side and it can be stacked in a corner somewhere. So for quite a big, solid, heavy table, I mean, you know, great size for a family to, to dine at in a kitchen or to work on, or like we've got it in a large room, to have it behind a sofa, very practical. Even though it's so big and heavy and very rigid, it comes apart quite quickly and easily. So let's put it back together again quickly and we'll have a look at the bolts from the other side so you get a better view of it. So, here we can see a really good sized thumb bolt with a brass head and hopefully you can see that this um, locking bar here overhangs the stretcher as we discussed earlier, sits there on its little V cut out shape making it even more secure. So you've got a brass nut plate at the top here and a corresponding one in here for it to screw back into and um, that really makes the table nice and strong and secure. This stretcher bar pushes these legs out, they're slightly canted anyway which again adds to its stability. The one thing that we always look for before we buy a campaign table is the wobble factor. Uh, a lot of antique campaign tables are naturally going to have a little bit of, um, of, of wobble to them as uh, the wood has moved over the years, over time, and given a little bit, you know, and sometimes you might uh, pad it out a little bit with a lever or, or what have you, just to uh, make it a little bit more secure. Absolutely no need with this table. It really is very, very solid. You know, these... Uh, these level legs are not moving um, at all. And you've got a very rigid, solid, very practical for modern use table. So what would this table have been used for? It's very unlikely that it would have been a private purchase from an army officer. Possibly it was from a barracks, but there's no broad arrow or crow's foot mark on it to indicate that it was border of ordnance purchase, I think it's probably more likely to have been made for domestic use. Uh, someone needed a good sized farmhouse table that they could quickly and easily fold up, uh, move out of, their, out of the way if they needed some extra space. Perhaps it was used on a farm and uh, perhaps when they had extra workers coming in to bring the harvest in, this table was brought out and it was uh, 
used to give them a good hearty evening meal to thank them for their work or perhaps um, for the harvest festival party at the end of the season when all of the work was done. What we do know about it though is, as I've already mentioned two or three times, it's lovely and solid and rigid, very practical for modern use uh, in a kitchen to dine off, I mean a great family dining table. You could also use it to do an awful lot of work on. Um, you've got a great space here. It's six foot six in length, so um, that's, a, that's a great size. Um, it's made of oak, good old English oak, and it dates to around about 1900.